I recently read the book, Why We Sleep, by author Matthew Walker. Sleep seems to be the most unproductive thing we do. We spend a third of our lives motionless when we could be getting stuff done. But if you could see what the brain was doing while you slept, you'd see that not only is sleep productive, it might be the most productive thing you do all day. Author and doctor Matthew Walker has studied sleep for over two decades, and he's found that during a full night of sleep, our brains transition between three types of sleep, deep sleep, light sleep, and REM sleep, also known as dream sleep. Every 90 minutes, we cycle through these three phases of sleep, but not every sleep cycle is the same. When you fall asleep, the first 90 minutes of sleep is mostly deep sleep. When you stay up a bit later than normal to watch a movie or browse the internet, you're sacrificing a large portion of your deep sleep that night, and that's something you might regret. You can think of deep sleep like a mail delivery service. During the day, your mail room collects packages. This mail room is your hippocampus, a temporary storage space in your brain. The packages are bits of information you've learned during the day, like a person's name or the steps of a new work procedure. When you fall into a deep sleep, you start up the fleet of delivery trucks and start delivering packages from your mail room to permanent addresses in your brain outside of the hippocampus. But if you decide to stay up late and skip out on the first two hours of your regular sleep schedule, you'll fail to get those packages to their intended destination, and the contents of those packages might be lost forever. Because right after deep sleep is a period of light sleep. Light sleep is like the mailroom cleaning staff. Its job is to clear the hippocampus every day. Because after being awake for 16 hours, it's hard for your hippocampus to hold on to any new information. That's why when you're staying up late to read a textbook, you often find yourself reading the same paragraph over and over again, failing to comprehend the information. Light sleep is a mental refresh, which renews your ability to learn new facts. To prove this, Walker invited two groups of students into his lab. One group of students had just pulled an all-nighter, and the other group of students got a full night of sleep. Around noon, he had them study the same set of facts, then allowed them to get two full nights of sleep. After the two full nights of sleep, he tested how many facts they could recall. The sleep-deprived group who failed to get enough light sleep and clear out their hippocampus the night before learning recalled 40% fewer facts. That's the difference between an A and an F. Most of our light sleep is at the end of our regular sleep schedules. That means waking up early to study is actually counterproductive. Waking up early and only getting five to six hours of sleep severely impairs your ability to learn new information. And if you get up much earlier than normal, say 5 a.m. when you typically wake up at 7 a.m., you're also missing out on the majority of your REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement. If you were to film yourself during REM sleep, you'd see your eyeballs rapidly moving underneath your eyelids. You pretty much look like you're possessed. If you filmed the rest of your body, you'd see nothing. Because during REM sleep, the rest of your body is completely paralyzed. To illustrate what happens in your brain during REM sleep, let's use another analogy. If deep sleep is like a program that stores handwritten notes that you made during the day into a permanent cloud-based note-taking system, like Evernote, then REM is like a program that goes through those notes in the cloud, combines them, edits them, and produces a story you can understand. When you enter REM sleep, your mind gets to work trying to make sense of what happened during the day. To do that, it makes connections between newly stored information and previously stored information. The connections it makes are often bizarre and something you never think to do while you're awake. The result is often a creative breakthrough. For writers, this means waking up with an outline to their next chapter in mind. For entrepreneurs, it means waking up with a new product strategy. For scientists, this means waking up with the perfect experiment in mind. And for musicians, it means waking up with the perfect melody in mind. In fact, singer and songwriter Paul McCartney famously woke up with the entire melody to yesterday in his mind and thought someone else had written the song. But REM sleep not only offers creative insights, it also offers emotional insights. Walker explains that the dreams we experience during REM sleep act as a form of therapy. In the book he says, think back to your childhood and try to recall some of the strongest memories you have. What you'll notice is that almost all of them will be memories of an emotional nature, perhaps a particular frightening experience of being separated from your parents or almost being hit by a car on the street. Also notice, however, that your recall of those detailed memories is no longer accompanied by the same degree of emotion that was present at the time of the experience. You've not forgotten the memory, but you have cast off the emotional charge, or at least a significant amount of it. 
You see, without dreams, we would all suffer from chronic PTSD. Dreams thrust us back into anxious moments so that we can move past that anxiety and move on with our lives. If you're going through a bitter breakup or divorce, it's cycles of REM dream sleep that will help you transition from despair to hope. If deep sleep improves our ability to recall information and light sleep improves our ability to learn new information, then REM sleep improves our ability to make sense of that information and any emotions connected to that information. But if we fail to get a full night's sleep, a full seven to nine hours of sleep, and miss any part of our deep, light, or REM sleep, we will remember less, learn less, and understand far less. Without a full night's sleep, it's impossible to be our best selves. So to ensure that we get a full seven to nine hours of sleep each night, sleep needs to be our number one priority during the day. That's why every day I have sleep scheduled in my calendar and I treat it like the most important meeting of the day. To be ready for that meeting and fall into a deep sleep at the same time every day, I've built nightly habits based on two pillars of good sleep hygiene, dark and cool. When your brain detects light, especially the blue spectrum in light, it suppresses the release of melatonin. And that's not good because melatonin triggers your first sleep cycle and provides the initial push you need to fall into a deep sleep. I was shocked to learn that small sources of light, like an iPad or a bedside lamp, have a profound impact on melatonin. A study found that reading a book on an iPad suppressed melatonin 50% more than reading a print book. Another study found that a bedside lamp with just one to 2% of the strength of daylight can also reduce melatonin by 50%. That's why when the sun goes down, I perform the following ritual. First, I put on blue light blocking glasses. You can buy a pair of these on Amazon for $15. They don't help you see better. They simply filter out the majority of blue light hitting your eyes so that you can watch TV or be on your phone at night without profoundly impacting your sleep. Second, a half hour before bed, I start reading a print book under a red light that emits almost no blue light. And then when it's time to sleep, I put on a sleep mask for total darkness. The second pillar of good sleep hygiene is keep it cool. Our body temperature needs to drop two to three degrees Fahrenheit to fall into a deep sleep, but this is often hard for the body to do when our houses stay at room temperature. That's why I've programmed my thermostat to drop my house temperature to 65 degrees Fahrenheit every night at 9 p.m. I keep my house at this low temperature throughout the night, which ensures a higher quality of sleep. And right before bed, I also take a hot shower. Now this seems counterintuitive, but what happens when you take a hot bath or hot shower is your body heat goes to the surface of your body and then dissipates into the atmosphere once you get out of the bath or the shower. This dissipation of heat immediately drops your core temperature to the ideal temperature for sleep. So in the end, focus on dark and cool prior to sleep to get your full seven to nine hours of sleep so that you can reap the benefits of all three types of sleep. When you experience deep sleep, light sleep, and REM sleep, you strengthen your memory, your ability to learn, and your ability to make sense of complex problems and recover from emotional setbacks. That was the core message that I gathered from Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. I never thought a book on sleep would be so fascinating, but this one is. I highly recommend it. If you would like a one-page PDF summary of insights that I gathered from this book, just click the link below and I'd be happy to email it to you. If you already subscribed to the free Productivity Game email newsletter, this PDF is sitting in your inbox. If you like this video, please share it. And as always, thanks for watching and have yourself a productive week.